if if I was to say, oh, look what I can do and and help people, that's not true. I can't do shit. What I can do is be present and hold enough space in the present moment so deep that the healing naturally moves through your body and takes place in Are you I'm doing great. Looking forward to this. I very much think that my success is a product of some level of skill, but I do think I win because I outwork people. Where did you kind of go from there? People call me Gaz, but Gaz. Most people call you Gaz. Okay. Well, let's get started. We could just dive into it because there's so much I want to unpack, and I'm really excited. I mean, really, I appreciate you taking time because this is going to be exciting. And hopefully we can get into a lot of the things that I think about a lot when I learn from you and and really just interpret the messages that you put out. I get super excited about it because I have so many questions. And so this is such a beautiful thing. So first and foremost, um, I, I just want you to kind of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what the intuitive structure looks like in your life. Um, OK, cool. So Gazelay Lo, Bondi Guru. Um, how does it look? The way that the way the way that I work, or the way that the the brand is. What, well, what is at it? first, I, I want to go through a progression of a little bit of how your personal life interpreted into the Bondi Guru brand. Um, yeah. But first, just kind of actually, let's just take us first to the beginning um, yeah. and tell us a little bit about where it started when you first understood you had some of these abilities um, to kind of really get the intuitive reading started in your life. Okay, gotcha. Okay, no problem. Okay, so when I was, I started around 12 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom and her friends used to do little coffee cup readings. Mm -hmm. Um, And so one day I was like, you know what, let me have a look. What are these guys all, you know, raving on about? They, They look at these cups and they talk to each other about something to do with, you know, intuition or what's going to happen. So I picked up a cup one day and I read it for one of my mom's friends. And that was it. And I never turned back because they were, they would always come back and go, oh, it's Gaz home. I want to want to get a coffee cup reading. Um, so that became, sorry, I'm going to have animals everywhere. Oh, please. Um, gotta love animals. Okay, good. Because we're at home. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, okay. no, please. So, so that became, um, that's where it started for me. That's where I realized that I could maybe see things or feel things that isn't so common for, for the everyday person, if you like. Um, an ability to be able to to uh, read people and then after a while I realized the cup was a bit of a gimmick I didn't actually need it because uh, I was able to read people without it um, and that was it that's that was the beginning of uh, my intuitive abilities if you like right and so that's yeah. where the journey began and so then how long was the progression up until the Bondi Guru brand was created yeah okay uh so i started a company called academy of intuition Mm. first so i think i was about probably uh 26 25 26 when i started that company Um, and that's where i would do all my intuitive sessions and one day my one of my youngest brother came up to my eldest brother asked me hey i'm thinking of starting a magazine do you think you can write horoscopes for me Mm. i was like can we swear here or not how does this is, are we allowed to swear on this? Is it? Oh, absolutely. It doesn't matter. We can just say, yeah. Please. I was like, By all oh, means, no, I can't. Speak oh, good. Really freely. Okay, cool, cool. So I was like, no, fuck no, I can't do. I don't know anything about horoscopes. And my younger brother said to me, well, if you do intuitive work, shouldn't you just know intuitively? I was like, okay, cool. I'll give it a go. Right. I wrote some horoscopes, uh, sent it out to some people to see, just get some feedback. And that was it. It was a hit from there. The magazine never turned out, but. Um, that's when the daily intuitive horoscopes were born. Many years later, um, one of my other brothers uh, started a company called Bondi Guru. Mm-hmm. Bondi is a place in Sydney, Australia. It's a beach, Bondi Beach. I'm not sure if you're aware of it. It's a very well-known place. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a beautiful place here in Sydney. And my brother, he, he lives in Bondi. And he's always been such a big Everything's all about Bondi for him. He loves it. Um, And he came up with the name Bondi Guru. And him and I started together. We started to, so I I kept writing the horoscopes and the brand was Bondi Guru. Then he moved on and I took over by myself. So that's pretty much, there's there's not much, um, what's the word? there's nothing glorious about it, if you yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. No, but <laughs> yeah. it is. It is glorious. Yeah. Because one of the things I like to focus on, especially through 
this podcast is talking to people about essentially how to form your abilities or your gifts into your passions and create kind of a pursuit of a professional career out of it. And so at that point, you know, I think there's a ton of beautiful components about it because that's what it really should reflect is that people that have a great ability to do something, or you just have the ability to do something that you can monetize. That's where I get, you know, really wanting to learn about your journey there because it's so interesting to me. That's a real ability, you know, that's like, something that obviously everybody doesn't have access to and hopefully we're going to unpack that because i'm interested in that portion of it um but yeah i think that's that's kind of where my question lied there i think it's it's interesting to hear how people you know kind of turn their their passions or their abilities into their profession so that's really interesting one of the things i love about the brand right now um is one of the trade or or taglines you guys have and you're using um and it's something that like i talk about all the time in my life but it's like essentially you guys are just referencing that when you are in the present moment um you are empowered and i love that and so one of the things that i've wanted to start with essentially as we dive into this is what is one of the best practices you have from either your experiences or things that you can intuitively feel one question is is it different for every person should every person have a specific practice for themselves but what have you found is the best way to get into the present moment because i would love to start with that for you to give us whatever you think because i'm super empowered by that i try to start with my breath work just the other day actually um we haven't dived into my my experiences with your intuitives but i'll tell you they're damn near magical consistently and one of the ones you sent me the other day um, was the intuitive about my breath work and I'm a cancer. And so yeah. you, you sent me some of the stuff about remaining in my breath. And it's been a huge yeah. focus for me this month because I'm probably yeah. the most overwhelmed I've ever been. And so yeah. that, that's been really powerful for me. But so, you know, back to the question, what would be your from your experiences, the best way to get into the present moment? Yeah, such a such a great question. Um, for me, it's. The way that I started with the present moment awareness, present moment work, was planting both feet firmly flat on the ground. I always knew if, I, if my feet are on the ground, ten toes down, mm-hmm. and I start to bring my energy and my my awareness and my attention to the inner energy field of my feet, right? Then I know I'm in the present moment. Then my ability to just land and stay grounded and centered and not get lost in the stories or emotions or whatever, whatever, identities, all that stuff. Just landing in the here and now through the feet is perfect. So are you envisioning that from a, uh, like a visionary standpoint where you're really envisioning planting your feet and kind of the energy of, you know, cause I feel that when I plant my feet right now, even doing that, I feel that, or is it you know, are you applying breath work to it? Like, where does the sensation come from for you? Is it kind of all within that moment? Like you immediately ground your feet and you're grounded, you feel present. And is that because it's your practice or is that pretty, uh, you know, across the board? Yeah, yeah, I hear that. Um, many, a long, long, long time ago, I went and did a um, 10 day silent retreat. I did a couple of them in my early twenties. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I learned about the inner energy field of the body. Uh, That's where I learned about uh, bringing the attention to the sensations inside the inner energy field of the body. When I learned that, I practiced the living daylights out of that every day, every day, every day. So until it became normal for me to always have part of my attention in the inner energy field of my body. So a lot of, even like in this conversation, my attention is in the sensations, in the sensations, which is, helps me to stay present and grounded mm-hmm. and then, you know, and have, you know, a real conversation, Right. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. and that's, and I've practiced that over and over and over again until it's just the norm. I don't know myself without having my attention part of it in the inner energy field. Don't get me wrong. I've got stories that, you know, turn up and ups and downs and ebbs and flows of life. I'm just a lot faster at just going, okay, that's mm-hmm. what's going on bang, come back to the present moment. Yeah, that's an important realization for people to have because one of the things I want to focus on is essentially educating the youth, you know, under 50 really is who should be focused on the youth right now. Just really what takes place within this structure of whether it's meditating or whatever, everybody gets this false idea that, 
you got to just have the perfectly silent brain. And, you know, I, I think that's really deep what you just said, because it's something for me that I focus with all the time, because I get destroyed with my brain just going crazy about stuff, yeah. you know, yeah. and it's always throwing me the next thing, or you got to be worried about this, or you should be doing this, you know, and so I think it's pretty important for people to remember, because, you know, one thing we got to figure out here is that people got to understand that these practices are things we got to learn to just implement daily. You know, and I'm not good enough about it for sure, but I need to be better. Um, but I mean, it, it's so important because I mean, it's unbelievable how easy it is to just get thrown off track with the social media structure of the world and and all the stuff just being thrown at us in our daily lives and the shit people go through. You know, at the end of the day, like people got to really implement serious practices to ground yourself so then you can operate as yourself. Because I mean, it's pretty crazy when you get lost in all the sauce of it. You know what I mean? Mm, it's yeah. true yeah I hear that okay I like that a lot so um you know as it pertains to the Bondi Guru brand okay one of the things I really like is the kindness campaign I think it's pretty powerful initiative and it kind of goes along the lines of what we're talking about right now which is essentially this effort to give back and help people as a whole tell people a little bit about the kindness campaign about what you did by not charging people for this service that every single person that hears this every person that we can touch needs to get on because just the emails alone i want to share some of my experiences but they change people's lives i mean it's like i'm telling you the other day i was having a full-fledged fucking panic attack like yeah. where my, my heart was going serious and i was like fuck there's a lot of stuff i gotta handle i was stressed out about some stuff and then i i was in the gym and then i opened my email and i read your intuitive and i was like wow that and it was literally just telling me to breathe and be grounded and I was yeah. like, that is, I mean, yeah. everything it needs to be about right there. So tell people a little bit about the kindness campaign, because I think it's a super powerful initiative. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the kindness campaign started, I think it was what about a year and a half, I think a year ago, so like that mm -hmm. it was in the, in the intensity of COVID. Yep. Um, I just remember when COVID hit, we had, we had members that paid for the daily intuitive horoscopes. So mm -hmm. that's the service that we were providing at the time. Right. Um, and we had you know, quite a few members paying each month. It was, was, a, it was per about around $10 a month they were paying. Wow. Um, and I got together with my team. When I say my team, it's Natalie and I, there's just two of us on the team. Um, and I was like, what can we do different to, to be able to support people? Right. Uh, we've kind of, kind of, you know, racked our brains a little bit. So, you know what, fuck it. Let's just make them free. Let's make these daily intuitive horoscopes available for as many people as possible globally. Mm -hmm. I know that they have an effect and I know that they have a very powerful effect, not necessarily because of what other people say to me, but to be truthful, it's because of how I feel when I read it myself. Oh, wow. you know, there, are, there are definitely days like where I'm like, I don't know what's going on today. Immediately I go back and read my own uh, star sign and I'm like, okay, it levels me out. It makes, it reminds me, you know what, I'm actually, I'm actually where I need to be. Mm. So all of this stuff that's going on is just part of the process and it brings you back home to, to the present moment again and reminds me, okay, I'm, I'm where I need to be. Right. I want as many people as possible to have that moment, even if it's just like three seconds, that could save a life. To me, that could save a life. Three seconds of, okay, it's not that bad or, or it's really shitty because I think we need to be real. Some things are really shitty. Some things are not, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to be in that Zen space all the time. Right. Um, and so for people to be able to be going through the, the thick of it in their lives and go, you know what? I can, I can do this for one more day. I can handle, you know, taking the next step because the words in the intuitive horoscopes can remind them that when you're present, you're empowered. All you need to do Sounds like nothing, and I know it's a lot for some people some days, but all you need to do is bring your attention back to the present moment. Mm -hmm. In this space, you'll be guided as to what the next step is. So it's like, let's make that available for you know as many people as possible. We took the price tag off it, gave it away for free, mm -hmm. uh, called it the kindness campaign, and, and started putting it back out on Instagram. Um, now we're doing daily videos. Since we've gone on to lockdown, I haven't done any videos because I've been, have been out of the office, but um, hopefully we'll be bring that back again soon as yeah. well. Staying on the business vertical of it, how, what have the residual effects been within your business model as far as scaling and getting that out to people? What has it done for your business, giving it out for free? Has it helped your business? Is that a good thing to look at for business owners? Um, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I haven't really looked at that side of it. Mm. 
I, that's not how I roll. I'm not. Right. Oh, I like. I mean, that. there was a, really definitely a, any real monetary incentive. There was definitely a certain a good amount of money coming in, and then once then they're free, of course, you know, you're not going to have that money coming in right, in right, that right, way right. anymore. Right. Um, but I. I didn't let that get to me. I just knew somehow yeah. it would all work itself out. Mm -hmm. We also made, we've got contribution. We, you know, we said to people, if you're in a position to be able to support these intuitive horoscopes to get out to more people, then, you know, you can pay for it. You yep. can put in whatever you like. Um, and some people do. And some people, if they're not in a position, that's okay too. Yeah. Right. right. No, yeah. I love that. I, I, I like it a lot because I think people were definitely struggling over the COVID yeah. Here. And so I think those are super powerful moments for people to have. And speaking from my experience, you know, I know yeah. exactly how powerful that is. And so I think it's I think it's super powerful and I loved it. So one of the other questions as it pertains to really the structure of what takes place as I want to dive into what an intuitive reading really is. One of the things that I always have been wondering, how do they, they cry if there's a clear answer for this. How do they have? How do they all cross over from astrology to intuitive readings? You know, yeah. if you could explain to me, so I have a better understanding, just for myself and for anybody yeah. else that thinks about these kind of things. You know, how do those worlds cross over, and how do the your ability to tune into that energy? How do those cross over? Yeah, cool. You got really good questions, by the way. Um, hey, I told you in my email, this yeah, I love it. stuff all the time. I think, I mean, yeah. it's, it's the truth to me, you know, I really yeah, believe I it. I'm, that's why I'm excited to break it in. Yeah, but I like where your questions are coming from. I like the place you go to, to bring those questions. I love it. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. Yeah, of course. Uh, so the intuitive horoscopes are not astrology based at all because I don't know anything about astrology. Mm -hmm. And I've never uh, um, studied astrology. It's never been really of interest to me. Yeah. My ability is to be in the present moment. That's my greatest, greatest ability. Um, that's my specialty is to get land in the now and not question anything. Um, when I'm in the present moment, I don't question what's moving through in terms of, and I don't want to be esoteric about it. For me, it's really important to be real right. and I keep my feet grounded. Um, and I, I'm able to be, by being in the present moment, I can feel each star sign, the energy of each star sign. It's, at the end of the day, it's all energy. So right. every star sign has its own energy. So for example, the Cancerians. So whilst I'm writing for the Cancerians, um, the way that I can describe it, maybe for people to have a bit of a picture in their mind is I'm then in the realm of the Cancerians. I'm in the energy of the Cancerian. Right. Whilst I'm in the energy of the Cancerians, then I can feel traits, characteristics. I can feel what's going on, da, 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 all that, that sort of stuff. That's why I pull the information. Interesting. I, yeah, I make sure that I don't look into astrology because I do get astrological questions. Right. And I'm like, I don't want to go there because I don't want to, I don't want to interfere with what I already have. I'm not interested in knowledge. Right. I'm only interested in my ability to be in this present moment and then deliver whatever the message is going to be. What I don't do is question the message. Mm. And I think that's, that's the true art of tapping into, 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 into intuition is to not fucking question it. Right, like almost leadership without interpreting when, whenever you're delivering, right? Uh, you know, if I'm understanding that correct, like you're receiving the message, you're not yeah. really trying to interpret it. You're just putting it out and giving people a direct landscape to receive, you know, what seems to be very, very, very accurate every time. So yeah. as that relates to astrology though, it doesn't relate to, you just break it down into the different um, signs just because that gives you an ability to coordinate to certain people? Or how does that relate? Yeah. How, how, how do you read specifically to that group of people? How, where's the crossover there, you know? Yeah, yeah. I used horoscopes um, fr from the beginning, which I already explained earlier about how I came across it. But I used horoscopes because I wanted to... Have my the message is the same and it's the same message to every star sign every fucking day it's the same message the message actually doesn't change right the message is and i know you might some might be like huh what do you mean yeah, it's I'm the like, same huh? message the message is be present right but i find different ways according to the abilities and the traits and characteristics of each star sign to deliver the same message so what i'm going to deliver to the Cancerian, which is get present, 
the way that I deliver that has to be different to the way that I deliver the, the Tory end because your ability to listen is going to be different. Right. The, the way you take in information is not going to be the same as the way the Torians take it in, okay. as an example. But I do think that butters it down a little bit because the truth is these are yeah. very pinpointed to, like I'm telling you, like when I read mine from someone else's, it yeah. is unbelievable how spot on it hits, not just like what I'm dealing with and hey, you need to remind yourself to be present, but yeah. it's like directly in tune with what I'm dealing with in that moment. Like, yeah. like for instance, just today I read the one for tomorrow and you were addressing the fact that I need to be ready for all this weight to come off my shoulders. And it's yeah. legitimately felt like that for like three, yeah. four weeks now. It's felt like it's just been building and building and building and all this stuff is about to come off and I can find a lot of peace in, in that present moment. And so I think that speaks to like, yes, there, I think they all do have the underlying message to be present, but there yeah. is a lot of specific information to each person or to, yeah. I, I guess to each sign, right? Yeah. You know? yeah. And so that, so that's what allows you to get to, I mean, you know, how is it that that's where it's so crazy to me is how can it be so, if you can give me an answer to this, how yeah. can it be so specific to such a large group of people? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. What, how does that work? If there's an answer? Yeah. Yeah, of course. And I can answer that. It took me a while to figure that one out. It's because it's energy. So because you're, under the energy or within the energy framework of the Cancerian. So the way that whatever's moving through the energy of the Cancer is the same for all Cancerians. This is the only part where it differs. Um, and I say this a lot in my recordings and the audios and videos. Mm. It's one thing that this is going on for the Cancerians. Then it's another thing for you as an individual to recognize the exact direction of the message mm. where it's directing you as an individual. I like that. So the message goes a lot deeper when you ask yourself the question You're as an individual, not even as a Cancerian, but as an individual. Okay. And you and you have to be present too to receive the space. Mm -hmm. I like right. It. As an individual, then you can understand the exact direction. So what it's really saying to you as Brock, rather than what it's saying to you as a Cancerian. I like that because that's yeah. exactly the visual I painted myself was essentially each sign is under an umbrella and if yeah. the person chooses to have the ability to essentially yeah. process what that message means in their life. Because like my thing with your, like my technique with your messages and, and the intuitives that I get from you, I like to read them three different times throughout the day. And then yeah. the last time I read them, when I'm usually just sitting, chilling, smoking by myself, I want to really process, you know, and yeah. I think about, okay, where's the application in my life? Like, what is that really telling me? You know, because yeah. I I'm telling you, and I would encourage people to get this because this has been my biggest truth is that when you find something that you believe in and you can put real faith in, and like, I believe in everything we are talking about, the true energy yeah. of the world like this, right? And I yeah. put my faith in the fact that not just your intuitive readings, but that that is a, a representation of what I believe in. And so like, when I put my faith in that and sit in that message and then mm. figure out how that, it gives me so much peace because I'm mm. like, I, I know I'm on the right path. I know that if I just, sink back into the present moment and don't worry about the future or the past because that was my biggest thing and I think it's a something a lot of lot a lot of people deal with you know everyone's yeah. thinking yeah. about what's going wrong or how they should be doing this different or they should be here with these people or do I mean it's the most beautiful feeling in the world to anybody that has never experienced it to get yeah. extremely present you yeah. know question when you focus on your present practice and you're working on getting present, okay, I'm, I'm a big fan of someone called jo Dr. Joe Dispenza. Are you familiar? I'm familiar, yes. Yeah, so I love Dispenza, okay? He's yeah. a good dude. And one of the things I love about his stuff is that I've really digested a lot of his information and I worked on, you know, and this is actually interesting. Um, I, I focused on a long time. I was wondering, I was missing the application of his teachings. I was trying mm -hmm. to understand like, okay, I get what you're saying. I get, I can go to this place and I can feel these things, but I was missing how to actually get present. Long story short, I ended up coming to the understanding that it was going to be about breath work, 
um, mm -hmm. and really going through a real progression of working on my breathing um, and, and getting into like a meditative state and going through the Wim Hof progression essentially. Um, and I put together my own little progression. So it's pretty interesting to me because when I think about his stuff um, and, and his teachings, I'm wondering, you know, at, at what point can you implement the breathing techniques that he structures in and, and that a lot of people talk about into mm -hmm. your intuitives and working on the present moment? I mean, how do all of these things come together? Like if somebody's building a perfect routine on how to ground themselves, you know what I mean? If that kind of makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it does. Absolutely makes sense. Uh, two things there. First of all, there's a difference between the person that takes responsibility, uh, someone such as yourself. Um, so taking responsibility, meaning that they ask the empowering questions of themselves. So when you go back and you, you read your forecast for the day, you're doing it. It's not about right or wrong, but you're doing it the way it's intended to be done, which is now go back to yourself and ask yourself the, the question. Right. So you bring it back to yourself. And uh, when you talk about Joe Dispenza or Wim Hof, all of their methods, I think we can call them methods. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I don't wanna, yeah Cause they're brilliant. These guys are amazing. Yes. Uh, the work that they present is beautiful. And then the work that they present also has come to them and it works beautifully for them. What I don't feel that there's one way of doing breath work. Mm -hmm. So you've, it, cause what I'm hearing from you is you've taken what they do, but you've also made it more Brock, what works Absolutely. for Brock. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and I feel that's when, again, you're, an, you're a fucking individual, being individual. Right. What is it you take from other people, what resonates for you? And if that's, uh, you know, Wim Hof or whoever it might be, take that work and then you make it your own because it has to be your own because it needs to move through you 100%. does that make sense yeah i 100 percent agree okay i love I don't know if that's that. that's your question. Focus. that's a big focus for me and i think it should be a big focus for a lot of people you know yeah. at the end of the day it's just you couldn't have said it better i mean everybody's a fucking person like you need to figure out every single person that crosses this message needs to understand you just got to figure out your thing you know yeah. whatever it is to ground yourself that's yeah. that. And, and it's crazy because like what I told you in that email, the first one I reached out, like for a very long time now, my thing has been your intuitive readings. It's it's yeah. it was actually a huge push for me because I was getting through. I've taken on a lot this last fiscal year and yeah. it was, you know, I used to be so good when I just was like renting a house and had good structure. And then I yeah. went building real estate and doing all the stuff I've been doing with media and all this crazy stuff you know, you yeah. get lost in the jumble of everything. And, and when you look back, you're like, whoa, 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 I'm super off track. You know, I'm not yeah. grounded the way I should be. So I think it's yeah. super important for people to remember that message. And it's just, you know, there's a lot of different ways to cut the cake. You just got to figure out what it is for you. And at the end of the day, you know, find, find habits that help you get grounded. Uh, I think that's spot on. I like the one you said a lot about grounding your feet in the ground. I'm going to use that even more because like, I don't do that enough when I meditate and I like it a yeah. lot. Yeah. I, do you mind if I throw something in, Brock? Please. Um, when you say you, you recognize that you were off track, for me, and this is the part where, this is the message that I would love to get across to as many people as possible, because have, so many people have this comparison thing going on and this idea of who they have to be to be connected and all that. And so all of it's bullshit. You have to go off track to understand what it means to be on track. So learn again, that's the ebbs and flows to understand and appreciate when you've gone off track and when you're not meditating and all the stuff that bring you back home to yourself so that you know what it feels like, mm. what it feels like to be back home. So then you're going to keep doing that until coming home to yourself is what becomes the norm for you. Everybody has to go through the ebbs and flows. There's not going to be anybody that just sits and meditates and goes, okay, I've, I've made it and, Perfect. you know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, love, I just want to get that across. No, yeah. no, I think that's beautiful because everybody gets, I mean, I know so many people, and this is the toxic trait of it is you get down on yourself and then it's it becomes a toxic repetition thing. And then people are just getting down on themselves all the time when the reality of it is, I mean, you could not have said it better because I, I, I'm not going to lie. I try to focus on that a lot in the last two years because I was not that way you know I was yeah. the psycho competitive athlete the I gotta be better I gotta work out harder I gotta go get more done I gotta build the biggest business ever you know I was all of that 
And then I was like, whoa, that is the most empty pursuit I've ever seen. Fuck all that, you know? And I think it's, it's really important what you're saying, because at the end of the day, it's so true. It's like, and I, and you know, I'll just speak from my own experience. What I tell myself is like, I, I agree with you hundred percent. My reference to getting off track, I never feel like I'm off track. I yeah. have sold myself hundred percent on the message that I believe I'm on my path hundred percent and I, I can't get off it. You know, it's not a choice. You know, it's yeah. like I'm, I'm walking the path and whether I'm going to correct myself and tell myself it's not a, oh, you're not doing good enough. It's just, hey, I just need to correct here. You know, I just need to do this a little bit different. I need to re-implement this into my life so I can feel the way I want to feel. You know, yeah. I, I love that. I think that's what it's all about. It doesn't have to be like a oh, fuck, man. You've done nothing the last five years that you could be proud of or you've not done this. People need to stop getting down on themselves about that. Like it's simply about just like appreciating the things you can appreciate and then moving on and and you know just correcting a little bit I like that a lot because the negativity shit that that's one thing I want to quote unquote preach on is that yeah. everybody's got to get that shit out of the system it's it's just the most toxic thing and it's unfortunate because I mean you said it spot on the comparison culture is just egregious and trust me from somebody that works in the social media world and the digital media landscape mm -hmm. i i know nothing more about it you know so it's, yeah, I hear that. it's pretty heavy <laughs> okay last thing on the business structure sure. and i want to address them if somebody is coming across the bondi guru brand break down each of these verticals for me with your ideal application. So I come through Bondi Guru and there's three main verticals really. Okay, you got the daily intuitive horoscopes. That's basically a subscription where you're gonna get consistent messaging from you. And these are what we've been talking about the last few minutes is all the things where it's, you know, we, we just address them all. It's under each of the different um, signs and, and people can get their independent reading. Then you have the monthly intuitive horoscope and then you have your themes and your audios and all those kind of things. Just yeah. those three verticals specifically. Somebody comes through your brand. How do you want them to interpret those and implement them into their life? You know, if you're giving them the ideal, like, hey, I want you to use your daily horoscopes to do this. Like we've talked about, different for everybody, but give yeah. people the basic. This is where I think you should start and expand on it from there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let me, I'm going to go, I'm going to start with the theme of the year. The okay. theme of the year, each year, because it kind of goes backwards a little bit, is a compass for each year. That's your compass. When you know what your theme is for the year. I like that. Uh, and I, I don't, it, what happens is uh, you, as soon as you understand your theme for each star sign, Right. The way that that becomes your compass, it supports you to navigate the ups and downs of the year. So when you, especially when you're going through the thick of it, if you understand, mm -hmm. for example, I don't remember what the cancer is off the top of my head um, for the theme of the year, but let's just say breath. It's about breathing. No it matter is, what happens. It, for, it is that. Yeah, for example, no matter what happens that year, you remember that uh, this is supporting me to breathe. This is supporting me to get better at breathing. It all comes back down to that one word that each word carries its own vibration. So getting people to connect to that one word for the year, for your star sign. Mm. Then the monthly intuitive horoscopes, they're probably my favorite because of the audios that come through. So the monthly intuitive horoscopes is more detailed in supporting the individual to ask the better questions and supporting the individual to come back to the present moment and practice. There are certain practices that the individual can receive through the monthly intuitive horoscopes and also one focus. There's a focal point every month. The focal point for actually, you know what, for the Cancerians this month is breathing. And it's all about getting you to come back to one thing, one thing only, and that is breathing. So no matter what happens in that month, all you have to remember is breathing. Keep mm -hmm. coming back to the breath work. Uh, and then there's also key date audios that you receive on certain dates. So you might have about four or five different key dates. Those key dates are just me letting you know, hey, this is what's about to come up for you, like on the 15th of July, uh, uh, whatever the content might be, this is the way you want to show up for what's happening. Mm -hmm. So it supports you to, again, come back home to yourself, understand what's happening. So there's no more guesswork around what work am I supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It takes the guesswork. So many people, I've worked in this industry for more than 20 years now. And I find what, what happens in particular in sessions when I speak to people, is they don't know what work they're supposed to be doing. Right. Which is kind of part of the conversation we're having right now. 
Yes. Um, and so that's the power of the monthly internal horoscopes. It helps you to understand what work you're supposed to be doing just for that month. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go into anything further than that month. Yes. I like and then you've got lot. people need to focus on that a lot. Yeah, exactly. That's, and that's very valuable. You know, people yeah. put too much on their plate. If you take it one yeah. month at a time, I mean, that is so valuable. If I'm speaking on stage, that's something I'm speaking about because it's yeah. that. It's like, hey, take one step at a time. Just go through the progression of it. You know the landscape. Just go one step at a time. And and it just like I think that right there, you fucking cured anxiety. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Absolutely. I mean, really, I mean, doctors Absolutely. can stop throwing out pills because there's better applications people yeah absolutely so, yeah. and now we've made it to daily intuitives and then the daily intuitives are your daily um compass you know to mm. support you on what to focus on for that day so much stories and ideas and thoughts and all the shit we've got going on in our head is to support you to just take your attention off of that even if it's for 10 seconds right if you remove your attention from the story in your head even for 10 seconds, you come back to the present moment, you breathe, however you want to do that, play, place your feet on the ground, then listen to the message that is here for you today, then use that message to live in today and be present in today and use that message to guide you, guide you to your own intuition. I don't want anybody listening to my intuition. That's not the point. The point is to bring you back to your own intuition, Right. which is why I said to you earlier, the message is the same for every star sign. Get present. When you get present, the, the answer is there for you or the solution that is available for you is there for you. I like that a lot. Okay. And so, you know, when you go through one of these things, then you break it down into an intuitive session. And there's like kind of a lot to unpack with that. I want to kind of talk about how this works as it pertains to you working with a person one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, and how you connect with their reading. Let's go through an actual progression and then kind of bounce Q&A off of it, you know, like we're doing now, because I want to understand not just like where it comes from, but how you tune into these things. Because like I said in the beginning, you know, if I'm not wrong, this is something that you can grow in and become yeah. better at, right? And so that's what, you know, where my, I, I'm excited to understand depths to like my intuitive reading, but I wanna learn how to tune into it, you know, because that yeah. that's the true gift, you know, is really, really learning to appreciate it and then tune in. So first and foremost, break down really quick what an intuitive structure looks like for a person, anybody listening, what it looks like when you're working one-on-one -on -one with the person, just the format of it, just the start. Sure. Uh, first of all, I, I kind of, they're called intuitive sessions. I stay away from the word reading. I understand that they can be seen as an intuitive reading because mm -hmm. of the intuitive horoscopes. Uh, they're actually very different from the intuitive horoscopes. Uh, so it's a one-on-one -on -one intuitive session. And the, I sit down with whoever. In these days, it's all done by Zoom because we can't, you know, with, with right. the way the world is. Um, and the way that the intuitive sessions work is you might say so you turn up and you want to talk, discuss what's happening for you in your life. So I'll listen to whatever it is that may be going on for you in your life. Often what I find is I'm not really listening to you. I'm listening to your words, but what I'm hearing is what you're not saying. Because mm -hmm. what you're not saying is the truth. What you are saying often isn't. Or what you are saying is the problem isn't the problem. And so what I do is support you to recognize first thing, get present. So we go through a process, help you to be present and stay present. Because when you stay present, the conversation changes. Yes. You're not talking about all the shit you thought you were going to turn up with in, in the session for me to give you the answers and tell you how to live your best life. Nobody can fucking tell you how to do that. Right. That's up to you. you got to do the work to figure that part out. Yeah. How do you do the work? You get present. How do you get present? That's where I come in and help you to understand and feel and recognize and also experience what does the present moment feel like for you in your body? Mm, what is it? Who are you? you okay. Does that make sense? Start us there. Take us through what that progression, if you know, we're doing an intuitive um, right now, what would that progression yeah. look like to get me as present as I could be? Um, in yeah. Your yeah, sure. No problem. So the way that I would do it is, uh, I'll do it now, is get you to, you got both feet firmly flat on the ground. Yep. Great. So bring your attention to the sensations inside your feet. And you can keep your eyes open, closed, whatever feels, feels good for you. Keep bringing your attention to the sensations 
What that means is that you're feeling the sensations inside your feet. That's all that means. You're not thinking about your feet. There's no trying. It's simply feeling the sensations inside your feet. And then certain thoughts may pop up. That's okay. Keep bringing your attention ever so gently to the sensations inside your feet. And the word gently is important because anything with a, to do with the present moment you'll find is actually quite gentle. Mm -hmm. The space begins to feel more gentle. And then your mind kicks in again. That's okay, let it be. There's, there's no battle here. Everything can remain as it is. The only thing you're doing is bringing your attention to the sensations inside your feet. Mind and body begins to deeply relax. You're alert, you're awake, and your attention is on the sensations inside your feet. And that's essentially you landing in the now. That is unbelievable because that similar sensation, and I know that if, I, and, and I can even feel it in the way that I talk after I yeah, get I can it. Feel it. That similar sensation is what I get from the breathing method I told you about. And I, I mean, I really wrote it down and developed yeah. a, a real system to get me there. I'm talking about like with minutes, increments of different kinds of breath work. I get a, and I'm sure if I sat in that for longer, because I was almost going into a trance-like state, you know, yeah. I get super tingly everywhere The like, Oh, and I remember I was kind of wondering where I was going with the Joe Dispenza thing earlier. I now mm. remember that it was me talking about getting to gamma and essentially getting to a like a state where your energy is just, I mean, unbelievable levels. And like for me, my skin gets all tingly. And I like one time I got into such a hypnotic state, I didn't move for like an hour, you know, just yeah. literally no moving. I'm pretty sure I didn't breathe for an hour, yeah. you know, yeah, right. crazy. Yeah. And, and I just was. Yeah piece though it was like it was because for me I spent so long looking at and and here's a side note and a good message for people you can see just now I went from focusing on that super calm to now all of a sudden I get revved back up and yeah. I want to talk and stuff and it's just the practice of slowing down back after the fact or whatever you know and regrounding yourself later when you get you know that gets a little bit too much anyway all that I was saying about the dispensa thing is that that was super interesting to me when he would talk about some of these magical things he was doing for people with curing diseases and all these different things, um, you know, in these events. And so he was always talking about these things, but I was missing. I was like, like I told you, where's the application? What, what I need steps, step by step dispenser. I need to know what I need to do to get there so I can get yeah. the gamma going, you know, because yeah. it sounded pretty yeah crazy and so yeah. it was actually one of the most beautiful experiences of my life and I had been telling my mom about it for like several months prior that I was so interested in this and it's it's like the, the next thing like I really think it's going to help everybody when this kind of thing gets mainstream and then when I got when I did it and I got to that point I was calling her and I was like crying basically I'm like I did it it was crazy you know I was telling her all of it so okay anyway we got a little off track back to the intuitive session yeah um, so okay so now that the person is grounded I mean relatively would you say so like you just took me through a progression to get me grounded do mm -hmm. I come out of that state or am I really always in that state? And it, you know, it's essentially, I was either just quote unquote, like off balance and getting present brings me back into that. Or can we like, in theory, could we proceed right now knowing that I'm in the moment still? We can proceed knowing that you're in the moment. It's just what happens is the pace of the conversation will shift. Right. That's essentially happens. Um, and the other thing in, whether it's Joe Dispenser or, or anyone that does any type of healing work, I'll use the word healing. The truth is the healing, what does the healing is the present moment. The present moment, the ability is the present moment, it's not us. And then I know somebody like Joe Dispenser would be very familiar with that himself. Because if, if, if I was to say, oh, look what I can do and, and help people, that's not true, I can't do shit. What I can do is be present and hold enough space in the present moment 
so deep that the healing naturally moves through your body and takes place in in the way that it needs to not in the way that I fucking think I should do it because what I my in this in going back to the intuitive sessions whatever you think is a problem isn't actually a problem right and that's what I want to get people to understand it's not a problem we can work with this but first we have to get present right the present moment then will guide us so I hold space for you in that present moment which means there's no judgment I don't see your problem as a problem I don't see you as a problem there's nothing wrong with you because of my ability to hold that space then whatever the solution is for what the real issue is will present itself but let me tell you something Brock most people are not patient enough to sit in that space one number two a lot of people are very and and not, don't have any peace with the present moment, so they can't remain in that space long enough. Because if you can, if you can really allow yourself, we we could do the process, and we sit here and allow yourself to actually be in that space long enough. You'll see what I mean when I say the solution for what the real issue is will present itself. Mm-hmm. You'll be like, "Fuck! I thought this is what I was working with, but actually, this is what's really going on." Mm-hmm. That's not me doing the work. That's just me holding space. That is, that is yeah. so real. And that makes, yeah. that gives me so much clarity. Um, yeah. And I think my verbalizing it's important because it'll paint the right picture. I've thought about it so much. And, and I think it's so interesting because I, I've been spending a lot of time and thought thinking about how energy connects to spaces, you know, yeah. and, and to people. And so in that, what you're talking about, and, and we can relate it to the dispenser thing, he does a lot of healing and he does it in big groups, right? Leads me to the question, energy is connected to a person. Do you think we have the ability to heal other people, not just ourselves? And it's just absolutely expanded tenfold when you get a bunch of people together feeling the present moment. Does it work like that where it's like real energy? I mean, for a visual, each person's carrying this energy orb and you get people together, they all get on the same frequency, the same energy of present moment. Is that what provides the healing? We have the ability to hold space for the healing to naturally take place. Because mm, the healing's already to... here. The healing is already taking place. It's, it's in the present moment. Yeah. Yeah, the, 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 the distinct difference is when we bring ourselves, meaning our identity and our body into the picture, we think we know what's, what healing needs to take place. The truth is I don't know, you don't know, Joe doesn't know. Right. But right. what we do know and what we can do is practice being present, being in the present moment and holding space mm. so much so that then whatever healing is best to take place will then naturally take place, not the healing that I, as Gaz, thinks should take place. Right. Yeah, that's the difference. That's very deep. That's, I mean, it's so interesting because I think it's, it's, I mean, like you said, I think it's extremely valuable to note that there's such a difference in messaging, okay? Mm -hmm. When there's a person that's trying to build a brand and sell essentially a service, and then there's a person like you who's providing essentially now what I've made clear is an experience you know yeah. uh, you're essentially correct me if I'm wrong sitting yeah. being in the space as almost just a, a guidance and a, like a counselor and listening to the truth you know yeah. which may not be what's said but ultimately yeah. when you get into that present moment which I mean I, I'm sure people just saw me even get into that because I, I yeah. feel like I do have a pretty good ability to get into it relatively quickly quickly I mean, I'm telling you, I felt that deep. And so at the end of the day, I think it's pretty interesting to note that when a person's trying to sell a brand and stuff, I had kind of a misconception that, oh, you know, I am your guru. You come to me, I'm going to help you out. When that is so powerful because it's the understanding that he's just getting you to that space, which is the truth. You know, that is it. And it's really powerful for me to put the pieces together right now because, you know, like when I felt that, by myself in my house nobody around full meditation for an hour and 30 minutes it is very hard for people to commit that amount of time to solidarity and and meditation but that's the practice it's nothing more than just connecting to it right like that that's where the healing takes place that's why 
you know, you could probably connect a lot of pieces to meditation and long life and all these separate things. Well, the reality might be you just get in that moment and that's where the healing takes place. Would you agree with that? 100%. The present moment does the healing. Mm. Yeah, as powerful as we might like to think we are, and we are, yeah. that we're not. Yeah, we're not. Um, we don't, at the end of the day, I think what's really important to take away is, I, and I say this with absolute love, and I know that this can very easily be mis misconce misconceived, perceived, I don't know, but um, is that who the fuck am I to right. think that I know how to heal you? Fuck off, it's bullshit, I don't know anything. And I don't want to claim to know anything. I don't I don't want to be this big fucking guru, superstar. None of that stuff's important. The name Bondi Guru, isn't from me. I took it no, off I my like it. The irony of it's beautiful because anybody that really connects to the brand really will appreciate it. You know, yeah, trust yeah. me, I, I'm in brands for a living. Yeah, so I, yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that. it a lot. And I, I mean, yeah. I just like, I like any time uh, of essentially a company, you know, is really value based and carries a lot of weight behind the substance of what the brand is. But the yeah. brand can be something that, you know, just sends a message that nobody can interpret till you really interpret it. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. that a lot. But it, it, I mean, it says what it needs to say, like Bondi Guru to the, to the person that doesn't know the in-depth version of like what we're talking about. Yeah. Great. Bondi Guru is how they should perceive it, how they should see yeah. it. Like, yeah. I would encourage that for the person that's yeah. naive to all the depths of the things that like what we're talking about to just yeah. take it as, yeah, this is your guru. Just follow yeah, it. Just yeah. take one step at a time. Trust yeah. what's being said and find something to trust in. Like, I'm sure you would, you know, recycle this message that it doesn't have to be you. It doesn't have to be me. It doesn't have to be any of us. Find yeah. something that gives you that fuel and you can stay on track with, which yeah. I know for a fact, your stuff will be that for a lot of people. Find yeah. your thing and then just, you know, stay on that and let that fuel you. Because, I mean, all the stuff we're talking about all comes back to the same thing. And it's like, it's right along those lines, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 I, I agree with you. And, and at the end of the day, one of the things I notice is that then the person turns up to the session or the group work and they realize, oh, fuck, I've got to actually do work. Right. Like, yeah, what did you think There's was going to happen? I was going to give you the answers. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they come for. No, you help me. You, I, I need to know all of these things about my life. I don't fucking know. How yeah. am I supposed to know? You that know what I mean? So. That's, I mean, it's so interesting because it's like, that's what people want now, I think, which is like, you know, when you say, oh, a reading, you know, you yeah. don't like it to be perceived as an intuitive reading. That's very valid, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, I think people want to come to a reading and get an answer. You know, yeah. it's not a fucking answer. It's yeah. essentially if, you know, I think more than anything, it's you enlightening people on a practice, you yeah. know, and it's like, hey, I'm going to give you the first landscape of what you need to understand here. But yeah. You know, and even me, it's so funny because even me, I'm now reflecting on like thinking about the past month of getting ready for our podcast together. I was thinking like, oh, I'm so fucking excited. I'm going to get in there and just actually get to ask the questions I want to ask her about the business and the brand and the intuitive readings and all these things that I think about all the time. But then I'm going to get, you know, to do an intuitive reading with her or non-intuitive reading, uh, and, and intuitive with her. And I'm going to get the opportunity to get the answers for me on like, what's next, you know, yeah. when really it's like, it shouldn't be looked at that way. Right. You know, it should be about coming into the space and letting the answers, you know, come out on their own. Right. Yeah. Well, the answers are already available. My, my, um, specialty is asking the right questions. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what I, from day dot, that's what, uh, my specialty has been so once a person sits down we get present um the questions that i usually ask which is different for each person depending on right. the situation that question is a magnet sometimes i get people you turn up for a 45 minute session let's sit down for 10 minutes i'll give you a question now you go back and work with that question how do you do that you got to hold space for that question a question is like a magnet you know magnet imagine you put it in front of you and it pulls out everything that attracts into that magnet right. so that's what the question does it goes okay it scans you and goes okay there's the answer got it mm -hmm. uh, you know but it but you have to go and now hold space for the question and not look for the answer and that's the hard part for people right. why because i just no i need it fixed i need i need to know this this and this and this well, okay well it's going to take some time and space 
So if there's a question that somebody's wondering in their own life, because that seems to be the easy part, right? People sitting and questioning like, oh, what should I do about this? Okay, now let's say you're a person, you got a question. What yeah. actions do they need to take to make space for that question? And how do you present it to yourself? Like, because for me, you know, I've got a consistent conversation taking place in my head at myself all the time, you know, and I've just learned to tell myself that it's normal and I don't need to fight it so much. And I don't need to tell myself I'm crazy for it, you know? And so at the end of the day, it's like, what practice do people take into that where they can do this kind of thing on their own, where they create space for the question, you know, yeah. if they already have the question. What do they, what, how does that action, like, how does it look actionary, you know, make yeah, it sure. Um, well, first of all, it depends on the kind of question. So uh, if, for example, if they're in a session, I, I change the question, put it in a format that is empowering. Mm. If you ask the question, what should I do now? I'm going to say this with love. It's a dumb fucking question. Mm. Don't ask questions like that, you know? Right. Um, so what I will do is reformat the question so that it then supports the person to be able to hold space for the question. Now, if you're not in a session, you don't know how this works, no problem. Um, I'm just trying to see what like, would be a really powerful question. Mm. This is an, it's an interesting question I'm gonna pose. Um, how do I feel about myself in my life right now, right? And I would get them to write it down on a just a scrap piece of paper, mm -hmm. right? And then sit down, get present, like the process we did before, yeah? Right. And you've got the question in front of you. All you're doing is holding space for the question. How do I feel about myself in my life right now? When you slow, slow it down and ask the question consciously, how do I feel about myself in my life right now then just hold space so for you it could be your breathing bring your attention to the sensations you're not looking for the answer you don't need because the you that needs the answer is the problem <laughs> mm. right so then holding space and then whatever comes from that space is what comes from that space that's a beautiful representation of it because i was just thinking you know and it, it's so amazing because I love when the pieces start to click and, and hopefully yeah. things like this are the thing that allow people to get the pieces to click for themselves you know and when you're referencing holding space it, it's you know it's hard for someone to interpret for sure because it's very hard for me to interpret what that yeah. really means because I'm yeah. a big visualization person you know sure. so I'm thinking like okay what does it feel like to hold space well you know from what I'm understanding I think it's really just about you know simplifying taking space for yourself and then not proposing a question, generating an answer, but allowing you to sit in that question, right? And allow the space, quote unquote, to just provide the answer, you know? And, and it's not, and then, you know, is it gonna come? So when you have the ability to get the intuitive, does it come verbatim to you? Or are you putting the words together? Like, is it coming in English, you know, clear to you? You know, like, this is what it's saying? When I have the question, I mean, when you're getting a reading or not a reading, yeah. Uh, a session. yeah, when you're in it, no, when you're in a session and you're yeah. getting, you're tapping into like a, yeah. a certain star sign, right? You yeah. know, how does it come across to you? Is it, yeah. is it clear or, and then dialogued out and you're just putting it out for real? Or is it coming into you in a different fashion and you're putting together the words and, and then distributing? Yeah. Um, so I translate energy into words mm. and then it is the recipient's job to translate words back into energy and the part where I what I love about you is that you actually take responsibility and you ask yourself well how does this relate to where I'm at in my life mm. then it because it has to make sense to you at your level of consciousness and your language wow. and your does that make sense? And, and who you are, where you're at in your life. That's where you're the individual. So all I can do is I get, I feel whatever it is. I don't think about anything. I put on Tupac as loud as I, as I can. So that there's no, I love him. I love his music. So there's no, um, there's no thinking involved. I don't want my thoughts to get involved. Uh, literally close my eyes and just write whatever comes out. Don't question it. 
majority of the time, hopefully it's edited. Yeah, <laughs> um, and, and that's been, and that's what gets sent out. Does that make sense? So it's energy being translated into words. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So is there any kind of information you have uh, as to where it comes from for, I mean, just really the world, really? Because I mean, you're tapping into this energy. What does that landscape look like? Because that's where so many of my questions lie, you know, and just discovering for myself, you know, of just like, because I like to think I don't want to be the person who wants all the answers because I don't, you know, yeah. but I do love to have a, a great understanding so then I can appreciate it all. And so then I can help people and be like, hey, you know, it's okay. You know, like this is teaching yeah. this or this is about learning lessons or this is about teaching you how to get to the present moment. Like what, in your words, what does it look like? You know, what is the structure of it? Yeah. If I were to put words to a structure, because it doesn't have a structure, right. um, then I would be entertaining the thinking mind, which is not my area. Mm. And so, and I, I get that you want to be able to understand it. If you were to understand where it came from, then it can't come from that place. If your th because your thoughts can't reach, thank goodness that they can't, because they'd fuck it up anyway, because yes. all of our thoughts are limited. So your thoughts don't have the ability to go to the place where this stuff comes from. Right, so it's just an endless pursuit. Pursuit of what? Exactly nothing. It's just being present. It's yeah. keep dropping into the now. That's and that now feels more and more expansive. Mm -hmm. And the need to understand it drops away. <laughs> I love that. I love that. I, I mean, I, I think that from everything I wrote down, there couldn't be a more poetic way to end that. Because I think at the end of the day, that's got to be the focus. And I'll say for me personally, but for a lot of people is that you don't. And, and I think it's what a lot of people struggle with right now, me included, is just that we're all conditioned right now to want answers, you know, mm -hmm. and we want, we want to know if it's going to work out the way we want it to, or we want the comfort, uh, you know, we want the structure, we want to know what it's like, but, but that's the truth. And that is the deepest truth is that you got to let that stuff go, you know, and I, I really appreciate that message from you because it's so real. And that's, that might be one of my biggest things is, is maybe letting go of that. Cause I mean, you know, I think, from a humility perspective, my whole life has been about like feeling like I had to go, you know, prove to people that I was worth like this or show people that I was good enough at that, you know, and yeah. thinking that I had to go build all these things. And so it's been a powerful journey for me to let all those things go. And, and yeah. so I think that falls right in line with that, really. Yeah. Well, what, whatever you want to know is what gets in the way of you experiencing it. Mm. You know, so it's a bit of a paradox. I, I don't, you know. <laughs> but isn't it all? It's Yeah. <laughs> well, the truth is always a paradox, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, guys, thank you so much. This was my pleasure. This was very special. And I will definitely, I, I feel like um, getting into an intuitive session is better to do on an independent scale, you know, because yeah. I, I wanted to kind of dive into that and see if we could break down some of the back end of it, like how the actual structure works. But I think we did a great job of that without having to actually dive into yeah. my intuitive story. So yeah. <laughs> hopefully we'll get a chance to do that soon because I would love to do it with you. And I know that a ton of people will be following up and reaching out because this is going to be a pretty special thing um, for people to get connected to. So, I mean, please, the floor is open. If there's anything you'd like to leave, hopefully the whole millennial and younger generation with, um, please, the floor is yours. You know, I, I'm glad you said that. First of all, thank you. And thank you for your time. Thank you for your love and your enthusiasm. It, it goes a very long way and your appreciation. Um, I, I get a lot of young people that come in for sessions and they're usually in their early 20s. Um, lately, I don't know what's been going on. Um, and I just want to say, calm the fuck down. Mm -hmm. Relax. It will make sense whatever needs to make sense will make sense in due time i'm not saying don't do the work do the work focus on being present but really just calm the fuck down all the things that they think that they need to know you don't need to know them all of those things will just keep getting in the way of where you need to be right you know um that's a message i really want to put out to the the you know the people that are in their early 20s because a lot of them have this idea of this big business that they want to build an empire around 
health and all of this, which is lo lovely, all of it's beautiful, but, the, but a lot of it's coming from agenda. It's not really authentic to them. They're just trying to be what they're seeing. Yeah, you and I, I mean, I walked that path firsthand, and I think it's it's a super powerful thing to go through when, and, you know, if you're like me, it's, you know, it might come from ego, where you just feel like you had to go prove things wrong to people, and you had to show people that, you know, you were worthy of, of their love, and that you were going to be able to accomplish the things that you could accomplish, and then, you know, I think Honestly, it's my biggest belief that that's the only reason everybody's here is we're all just learning different things on this path of, of learning lessons. You know, it's what I tell myself all the time. It's how I try yeah. to find the positive in every single situation is what, yeah. I, what am I supposed to learn? And, and I yeah. think that that's so true. It's just that all, all the younger generations right now were consumed with the social media movement of, of showing you what life should look like. When yeah. in reality, let me give every little young person on here a wake up call. Let me tell you, those are not the lives you even want. I've seen all those lives. I've seen the lives you guys admire, you know, and, and it's not what you want. It's not, yeah, I promise. I and so glamorizing and, and romanticizing this idea of all the comparison stuff is, is for the birds, as I would say. And so yeah. at the end of the day, I, I think you're spot on, man. It's just like, at the end of the day, everybody's got to hear that message. It's like, let go of the shit you know just let it all go stop worrying about all the long form stuff it doesn't matter you know at the end of the day and, and there's a lot of peace and happiness with that so i really appreciate your time and the message was beautiful and i'm looking forward to connecting with you again hopefully we'll get you out to the states yeah hey for sure for sure thank you bro. are you